Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and welcome to another episode of Dad on a Budget. Today we'll be reviewing Drox Operative, a game that was released back in November of 2012. It's a top-down action RPG set in space. It's worth about 20 bucks as of this point in time. It supports single-player, multiplayer, and co-op. I currently have about 30 hours on record, for those of you curious. Uh, similar to Zombicide and Diablo. Uh, Zombicide was a game released by the same company. Uh, I think it was back in 2016, actually. So, it's Zombicide is newer than Drox Operative. I'm still on the fence, by the way, about uh, Zombicide, but that's a separate video. But yeah, it's also like Diablo 3 in the sense that it's a top-down action RPG. You'll be looting lots of stuff. Uh, what do you do in this game? I guess I should get to that. Well, what I do in this game is I fly around exploring systems. I uh, discover planets. I destroy neutral mobs. Uh, I meet major races. I complete quests. And then on occasion, I'll check to see if I'm winning or losing the current playthrough. More on that in a bit. So let's go ahead and get into what I liked about the game. And this is where um, I'll be explaining the core of the game because there's a lot to like about this, at least in my opinion. Uh, the Galaxy Creator. Unlike Diablo, where you have a set beginning and a set end and a story in between, uh, you're going to be playing a series of games. Uh, I call them playthrough, whatever you want to call them. But um, you can set up the galaxy any way you want. You can make it large. You can set how many people or how many races are going to be in it. Uh, you can set how difficult it's going to be. Um, the lower the difficulty, the lower the XP gains, but it's still doable. Like, you can put it on easy or very easy and still get a decent amount of XP and level your ship up. And even if leveling up quickly isn't your thing or you're not that concerned about it, you can just keep playing playthroughs, uh, you know, over and over and over again until you get to the level that you want. So it'll take you a little bit longer on the very easy setting or the easy setting, but uh, it's doable. Uh, so you casual folks out there can relax easy. Uh, it's it's manageable. Um, so yeah, lots of customization in the Galaxy Creator. There's also multiple ways to win or lose a playthrough. Uh, you can win a playthrough through military means, through diplomatic means, economic means. There's a number of different ways to win. And whenever you click on the win button on the very bottom of the screen, it brings up you know, what you have to do to complete that certain win objective. All you have to do is complete one of them. You don't have to complete all of them. But if you complete one of them, the scenario ends. And if you happen to complete, like, the special objectives that the Drox operative assigns to you, or, you know, even if you just complete one of the objectives, usually you get some sort of loot box or loot crate, uh, which gives you credits and other special loot that you can make your ship stronger. So that's really cool. Likewise, there's also multiple ways to lose. So um, you want to keep track of that on a regular basis. Okay, um, am I the only race so far that, uh, like, if everyone is allied but I'm not allied with anyone, then I'm kind of screwed. I lose that scenario. Um, if I lose too many credits because I keep blowing my ship up and have to respawn it, I could also lose that way. So um, I, I do believe that you still get you know, some XP and loot for, even if you do fail the scenario or the playthrough that you're on, but um, obviously it's better to win it than to lose it. Um, yeah, I already mentioned the whole loot boxes for winning and losing. Um, as a Drox operative, uh, by the way, just as sort of a backstory to the Drox, um, this is a race that used to prosper, um, but were sort of like, I guess defeated after a bunch of races banded up against them, but uh, the Drox weren't wiped out completely. Uh, that was the goal, but they weren't. You actually take on the role of the Drox. Um, instead of having, like, you know how in, uh, say, Stellaris or Galactic Civilizations, you get to pick a race, and then you get to see that race through its development. Technology, military, all that jazz. Instead, think of yourself as a mercenary. Uh, you're still sort of, there's still the Drox operative headquarters in the background that you can't see telling you okay i want you to complete these objectives for some extra loot or whatever but you're just a single ship 
a mercenary of sorts and you have to play the field you have to look at the races that you meet and figure out okay do i want to befriend this one but make enemies with this one do i want to befriend both of them and then work behind the scenes to be a jerk and and possibly steal technology from them because you there's actually multiple diplomacy options you can steal tech from them you can incite uprisings and and sabotage and and different things like that so there's still the diplomatic options from 4x games that you're probably used to playing but um there's only one ship that you're controlling and it's it's actually a really cool system that way. I don't have to worry about, well, I captured this planet and this planet, so I have to leave some ships behind to defend it while I go out and explore the rest of the... Nope, not at all. You can fly around. If you meet a race, ignore them if you want to and keep on exploring. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to play this game, and that's what I really like about it. Um, another thing that I enjoyed is the leveling system. Uh, there is an XP system as you complete quests, blow up neutral mobs, and so on. You'll gain experience. You also gain experience for something as simple as blowing up enemy ships near another faction. They'll actually like the fact that you're doing that, and you'll gain diplomacy points with them. So, there, there's multiple ways to gain XP. Um, there's also diplomacy points that you can earn toward races so that you can improve your relations with them. Uh, but yeah, the leveling system, as you level up your ship, you can assign uh, skill points into various systems like engineering, there's tactical, and there are certain, certain loot items that you pick up that are dependent on those stats. So for example, in Diablo, let's say you find a sword on the ground that requires seven strength. You've only got five strength, so you can't uh, use it. You can pick it up, it'll be X'd out, you can't use it. Uh, but if you get your strength over 7 or 7 or above, then you can use it. Well, similar to this, you can uh, pick up shields and different computer equipment, weapons, beam weapons, ballistic weapons. But if you don't have the right uh, ship stat to support it, then you can't use it. You can sell your items to any faction, get some credits that way. You can also gift those uh, loot items to a faction to get diplomacy points instead but yeah there's a ton of loot in this game ton of loot uh there's uh on your ship there are heavy medium and small slots uh red yellow and green respectively there's also a few minor slots for other things but um for the most part like the loot that you pick up will either be red yellow or green so you might pick up armor that is yellow in color and fits a medium slot you won't be able to fit that into a red slot, so uh, you might look at your ship and go, okay, which of my yellow slots, like, I have a shield in this yellow slot and a weapon in this yellow slot, and I don't have any more yellow slots, so maybe if I get rid of my yellow weapon, uh, and then maybe give myself a red colored weapon instead, which is a heavy uh, slot, uh, I'll have room on my ship for the yellow item that I was trying to equip in the first place. So there's a bit of loot management involved, some ship management involved, stat management involved. There's also a power ship power management system in place where you'll need to power all of the things that you're picking up. And if you're overburdened on power, it's not going to function all that well. Your ship does have shields. Uh, armor if you have it equipped, well shields if you have it equipped too, uh, health and energy. So there's four different um, things that you're going to be trying to manage uh, in addition to all the loot that you're picking up. So um, if your ship is really lacking in shields, you may want to look for loot that supports your shields. If your energy uh, tends to run out very quickly in combat, then you may want to try and find some loot that supports energy regeneration and so on. Or maybe even put talent points or skill points into, I believe it is, engineering that gives you a faster energy regen. Um, there's, so there's the ship power management, uh, there's a lot of loot. There's also neutral mobs of different levels. Uh, when you're thinking like MMORPG or just RPG, uh, you'll go out into the world, sometimes you'll find white colored mobs that are like your standard mobs. Green are sort of like uncommon, blue being rare, orange being like elite, 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 you know, stuff like that. There are mobs in this game that also have that system. So um, some neutral mobs are going to be stronger than others. And even some of the more elite mobs in this game 
will actively spawn ships and go after planets controlled by factions and try to wreak havoc. So uh, they're sort of like minor civilizations that act on their own, but they're mobile to boot. It, it's, it's actually really cool. Uh, last but not least, the thing that I like about this game, it's a time sink. Um, I only plan to record, say, a half an hour worth of footage for this uh review that I'm doing, I ended up playing for two, three hours. So before I knew it, I, I was, uh, I mean, I have a separate playthrough that I, I don't have access to anymore because I switched computers. I, I was like level, I don't know, 40, 50, something like that. But on my current playthrough that I did for this review, I, I started out at level one and I intended to stop around level two or three thinking I had enough video. And then I ended up at level 9 or something like that by the time I finally stopped. I'm still on the one playthrough, though, uh, meaning that I didn't uh, complete the galaxy that I was in and then create a new one. I'm, I was still on the original one that I created. So th you can easily spend two or three hours, even more, on one galaxy, depending on its size and all that. What I, what I disliked about the game, and there's only a few things here. The learning curve is a bit steep for those that are um, uninformed or used to the game. Um, if you've played an action RPG, you can somewhat get into it that way because you'll be familiar with the looting system. You know, all these different uh, loot uh, items that you can pick up, equipping them, stats. Uh, but there's a lot of different screens, a lot of different information, uh, and it can be overwhelming. Like, there's a lot of different screens that list a bunch of different stats. And while that is kind of cool, it also can overwhelm a casual gamer. So, once you get past the learning curve, uh, I think you'll be okay if you're a casual gamer. Um, if you're a casual gamer, don't be scared of the difficulty. While there is a learning curve involved, again, you can just stay in your home system for a while that you start off in. And just farm uh, neutral mobs there and you'll still be able to get relatively far. Even if you fail that playthrough, your ship XP and your level will carry over from one galaxy to the next. So you start off at level 1 on the first galaxy that you create. Once you complete that galaxy, you might be, say, level 5, 6, 7, whatever, and then um, at the start of the new galaxy, you're level 7. So your ship constantly improves as you play. That's another thing I like about it. So anyway, so very little in the way of dislikes, just the learning curve is really the only negative I can possibly think of. Um, as far as other miscellaneous notes, there is a free demo on Steam, should you want to try it out for yourself. There is also a $10 expansion that I don't own, it's called Invasion of the Ancients. I may actually uh, check that out and possibly buy it on my own dime uh, once I have the time to actually play it. So, what does this all boil down to? Is it worth it to a dad on a budget? Uh, the answer to that is a flat-out yes. Um, you can easily spend months playing this game on the one ship that you're currently on. Again, your progress does carry over from one galaxy to the next, so you can continuously level up your ship and get more and more and more powerful the more galaxies that you play. So, lots of content for the price tag. It is a game that is roughly five years old, though, so it's usually on sale. Uh, Steam specials usually have it on sale for maybe 50 to 75% off. So, even if 20 bucks isn't within your budget right now, um, I would say grab it when it's five bucks, ten bucks. Um, you'll easily find it on sale usually during a Steam special. So definitely go check this one out. I can't speak for the multiplayer or co-op. I haven't had a chance to play co-op or multiplayer with anyone. I'm rating it on the single player alone, and I've already gotten 30 plus hours out of that. So you can imagine how much fun I would have with co-op, assuming I could uh, get it to work with somebody else. So like I said, free demo. Go check it out if you haven't already. Um, I know some of you love rating systems, you know, 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, whatever. Uh, as before, I'm going to be giving it a different kind of review system, so here it goes. On a scale of I hate telemarketers Picard to a oh my gosh, I can't believe you're wearing pants Picard, I'm going to give this, this cake is absolutely delicious Picard. Hopefully... That helps to narrow down that particular rating for this game. I know a lot of you will find that extremely helpful. So, uh, with that being said, this is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.